It was all of booktube against this one middle-aged male booktuber with like two subscribers. <laughs> Jesus, we're so dramatic. Anyway. Hey guys, I'm Angus and today I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, so, yesterday I was supposed to work, but I ended up having the whole day off because my client cancelled on me. So I spent the whole day trying to come up with an idea of what video, oh my god, my hair, what video I was going to do today. And it literally took the whole day for me to come up with this. Today we're going to be tier ranking because tier ranking seems to be a popular thing happening on booktube. We're going to be tier ranking booktube drama. And I spent... Excuse me? Hello? I told them I was filming. It's not the time for vacuuming. Um, embarrassing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I spent a lot of time yesterday on booktube, on book Twitter, and just the general internet finding topics. And we came up with 18. I've got 18 different topics to rank today, which is a lot more than I thought. I don't even know if this is going to work. You can tell I had no idea what I was going to film today. So let's just get straight into it. The first topic we have today to rank is JK Rowling's transphobic tweet that she posted at the end of last year. How lovely. What a way to start things off. This one breaks my little heart. My little stone cold concrete cement heart. If you don't know, at the end of last year, J.K. Rowling tweeted something she really shouldn't have and she never apologized about it or anything. So that's canceled. Anyway, this one I think is very important tea actually. I didn't go through what everything means. Okay, so from the top, so I've, I've kind of got it like important tea is like things that are important to have happened. You know, like, like obviously this is really important because now we know that JK Rowling. Anyway, then we have entertaining tea, which are things that are less serious, but are really juicy and I love watching them unfold. <laughs> then we have average tea, which is like, oh, okay, we get it, whatever. Then meh tea is kind of like, why is this happening? And then right down the bottom is stupid tea, things that really shouldn't have been booktube drama, but have become booktube drama. So that's our ranking system. So we've put JK Rowling in important tea because it's really important that we now know that about her. Anyway, our second topic for today is dressing nice at BookCon. This is something that a now bigger booktuber said some things a year or so ago about how he would never go to BookCon or dress up like the people that go do and how he didn't get it. Pretty much what happened was people got really mad and it all happened around the time of BookCon. So it was like this booktuber, I'm not going to name names because we're above that. I feel like everyone knows who it is. This booktuber against all these people at BookCon, like the big group, they were being quite nasty about it with all these subtweets and all this bullshit. Anyway, it's all resolved now, but I think this was really stupid tea because um, who cares? I kind of understand why people got upset, but go to BookCon, dress up nice. I love seeing the photos, so just keep doing that and whatever. And I completely understand where this booktube was coming from, saying that he would never do it and doesn't get it. Whatever, that's fine. Both parties, that's fine. But we really didn't need this to be an ongoing theme because it went on forever and it was kind of like, okay, sis, we're over it. I've had enough. The next topic we have is cis-wide female authors who have no idea about gay teen boy issues writing gay coming of age stories which is quite a topical thing at the moment. Um, it's not quite a big drama on booktube, but it's something that I would like to see more attention paid towards because it's, I don't think it's okay. Um, I'm sick of seeing white cis authors writing about gay issues and gay coming of age issues when they really have no idea what it's like to be a gay boy growing up in the closet. And as a gay man who has had to go through that, I don't really enjoy seeing these women write these stories that maybe they don't fully understand. It's starting to appear like there's a kind of a fetish attached to it. So not about that. But for me, this again is really important tea, something that we need to address in this community. I sound like I'm being sarcastic, but I'm really not. This is really important. Oh my God, we're getting all of the hard topics first. Let's jump into the middle a bit. Um, oh, this one is a good one. The next topic we have is the Cassandra Clare lawsuit from a few years ago. Wow, I really did her dirty with that <laughs> I literally Googled like Cassandra Clare looking angry and found this one because she looks mildly grumpy. Anyway, if you don't know what happened a few years ago, the author of this series called The Dark Hunters claimed that Cassandra Clare had pretty much plagiarized her books and stolen her ideas. And the Dark Hunter series, the Shadow Hunter series, they have a lot of similarities in what they're about. But on further investigation, it turned out there was really nothing above YA tropes that was similar between the two. And also the Dark Hunter series came out after 
City of Bones. So I don't know where this came from. It's so silly, but again, I kind of liked reading about it and it was entertaining. So I'm gonna call it average tea. Um, anyway, oh, let's do this one. Book Twitter. Um, pretty much book Twitter is quite possibly one of the most toxic communities on Twitter. Um, I'm really over it. I'm really sick of the hate. I feel like you can never win on book Twitter. Um, the amount of negativity that's on there. This, I swear there's a new drama on book Twitter every day. That's why I've put it into one category because I literally searched on Twitter book drama, booktube drama, and there were so many different things happening. I couldn't split it up. So it's just one big topic. If you're on book Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. Book Twitter for me is stupid tea because why should a community of people talking about books be so fucking toxic? It's ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. All right, let's jump to, this one's a fun one. The Handbook for Mortals scandal. Everyone knows about this, but if you don't, about a year ago, some woman scammed her way onto the New York Times bestseller young adult list by mass purchasing her book, mass pre-ordering her book before it came out. So when it came out, it had like thousands of orders. And so it jumped to number one. Really interesting. Um, the book sucks a lot. It's, it actually was meant to be a screenplay, but that failed. So she made it a novel. This for me was entertaining tea um, because this is one of those few times where everyone on Booktube banded together to defeat this evil author. She's not evil, but you know what I mean? It was like the big bad, like, oh, how dare she? How dare she come onto our New York Times bestseller list and buy her way to the top? That's not allowed. So that was, that was really fun. Alrighty, let's jump to, uh, oh my God, fake reader girls. Who remembers fake reader girls? That was like OGT on booktube. That was probably one of the first big T things to happen. Pretty much what happened was, I think it was a middle-aged white, small male booktuber came onto the platform and pretty much said, owning good camera equipment is not allowed. Makeup is not not allowed if you look attractive not allowed you're not allowed to look good in your videos because people who look good and have good lighting don't read books apparently that's how it works i didn't know that um so i'm so glad this white male middle-aged man educated me on that this was good because it was one, another one of those instances all of booktube against this one <laughs> middle-aged male booktuber with like two subscribers <laughs> Jesus, we're so dramatic. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this in entertaining tea because it was just entertaining to see how this unfolded. Alrighty, next, let's talk about booktubers publishing books because we love to talk about that. So we've had a few booktubers publish books um, over the years and there's a lot of drama around that because people are like, oh, hey, they only got their book published because they have such a big platform. And of course, that's just, for me, I'm like, you know, these people have worked so hard to get, build their platform. They've worked their asses off to get where they are. Good on them for using it to further their career. That's something I would do. You know, if I got really big on YouTube, I would use that to help me get jobs in the film industry because, hey, look, I can sustain an audience. It's just a sign of how you are good at creating content that's engaging and like it's a good investment. It's really it's really looked for in this day and age of like anyone can create content. And so if you can show that you're able to do it on your own, then people are going to put money behind you. So I think this is stupid tea. Um, because just let them publish their books. And if you don't like them, don't read them. Feel free to read them. And if you don't like them, leave a bad review because that's good feedback. Alrighty, moving on. <sighs> Let's jump to the end here. Who have we got? Oh, we've got Colleen Hoover. Fun. So Miss Colleen Hoover was exposed, if you will. Not really. It was just kind of became apparent that her books dealt with relationships that involved a lot of nasty abuse and stuff like that and controlling and things that we didn't like. So, uh, I personally don't know much about it. I've only read one Colleen Hoover book and I'm going to talk about that in my wrap up for this month. So you can wait for that. I get it. People are upset about her promoting pretty much violence and like horrible attitudes towards women. But for me, this was just like average tea, you know, um, she's not the first author or woman to do this. I mean, we've seen it before in a lot of published authors and it just seems, so seems to be that because Colleen Hoover is in the YA market and that's our main demographic, she's just gotten all the hate and whatever. I'm not defending her. I don't know. Here we go. Another, another author controversy. Let's talk about Veronica Roth and her racist book, Carve the Monk. <laughs> Um, now I don't, I haven't read Carve the Mark, so I'm just going off what people are saying, but pretty much if you don't know what happened, Carve the Mark included some remarks that indicated that people of color were savages or something like that. Twitter went off, Booktube went off. Yeah, I, I didn't know too much about this, but if it's true, it's really not on. Maybe I should move Colleen up here. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to move Colleen just because this seems to be a theme. We need to hold our authors accountable for what they're doing. Um, different with 
Cassandra Clare because what happened was all false. Moving on, let's, oh, let's do another Cassandra Clare one. This one's a bit more controversial. <laughs> um, Cassandra Clare and her incestuous fan fiction past. This one was really hard for me to come to terms with because if you don't know, I love Cassandra Clare. So seeing that this was true kind of broke my little tiny heart a little bit. Pre-City of Bones, um, Cassandra Clare had a popular fan fiction story literally called The Mortal Instruments and it involved an incestuous relationship. It was a fan fiction about Ron and Ginny from Harry Potter. I just, I don't want to think about it. Anyway, I'm not sure if that was part of, I don't think that was part of the Draco trilogy and other fan fiction she did, but pretty much it was all that was fucked up because Ron and Ginny had a relationship. This one is average, I think. I don't know. I mean, that's her pro- <laughs> Whatever, it's gross, but did not did it really hurt anyone? I don't really think so. Tell me if you think it did, but I really don't think it's hurting anyone. I know her published works are dealing with forbidden love and there's a whole thing in City of Bones at the end, and you know what I mean, but that was all resolved. And it was, I thought it was a way of her showing Valentine manipulated them into hating each other, but whatever. I'm gonna say average team. Alrighty, this video is going forever, so I'm gonna speed up a bit. Let's talk about um, reading vlogs. So pretty much, <laughs> the biggest booktuber, our OG booktuber, you know who she is, put out a video about how much she hates reading vlogs and pretty much tore down the format of video. The very next video she uploaded was a reading vlog. And I don't know if she was taking the piss, but people were not happy. I didn't really care. I thought she was making a joke of it because she's never done a reading vlog since, I don't think. It was just her way of saying, I don't like this format, but it sells, so I'm gonna do one. So for me, this was meh tea because I honestly, it's old news. Alrighty, um, let's do a fun one. Um, the Bookstagram article. Don't know if you've heard about this one. An article in The Vulture titled, Here's an Annoying New Instagram Trend. And it talked about how bookstagrammers were posting photos that were like unrealistic. You know, when you do the flat lays and they're all really, really beautiful, but this, uh, this author was like, well, they're so unrealistic. Like no one does that. And they pretty much just poked fun and took the joke away too far, um, which made a lot of people really mad. And you know, it got to a point where the article was just really stupid news. So for me, this is stupid tea. This felt like an article just for clicks. You know, there's a lot of amazing books and pictures out there. So what if they don't look realistic? A lot of photography is not realistic. What the hell? Yeah, let's move on. Audiobooks aren't real reading. We all know about this one. A few people decided that they thought that if you listen to audiobooks, you're not really reading a book. Which yes, you're listening to someone read you a book, but you're still experiencing the book in a way that works for you. And for some people, that's the only accessible way for them to get through a book. So just stop. I'm sick of people making fun of people for how they read a book. Whatever, they're still consuming the same content. It's great that people are reading stories from authors because it's it's such a shrinking market like fucking stupid tea. No, meh tea, because it's good that we fought back against this person. The Hunger Games prequel. This is a recent drama. You know about this. There's a Hunger Games prequel supposedly coming out in May. I don't know if it's gonna be pushed back because of everything that's going on in the world, but we found out it was going to be an origin story for President Snow and people hated that a lot. I, whatever. I understand some people were like, it's not the kind of story we need now, but this is a story that's always gets told. The origin story of a villain, if it's told well, is excellent. This could be a great opportunity for them to, I don't know, twist it in a way that's useful to society. And again, these are YA books. The Hunger Games has already commented on a lot of things that are happening in the world. So for me, average tea. We'll see what happens when the book comes out, but three more to go. Small booktuber tea. This was a little one that happened a long time ago. I don't actually remember when, but I'm pretty sure it was before Fake Reader Girls and it was very small. This small booktuber pretty much came out as a Christian who doesn't support anyone who is not cis and white and thought that they didn't belong on booktube. And it was really gross. She really got savaged by the masses. She left booktube after that. For me, this was important tea because it's important that we make sure booktube is a welcoming place. And if people are gonna say that, it's fucking YouTube. Everyone is allowed on here. It's not for fucking white people. Let's do book of the month YA. You'll remember this one. So pretty much a little while ago, everyone and their mum had a book of the month YA um, affiliate link. And it was just a time where every video of like a semi to popular creators were talking about book of the month YA. And this thread happened on Twitter between some bigger booktubers. And they were pretty much poking fun at the fact that everyone was promoting book of the month YA. And it was all playful stuff, but it really got taken out of perspective and People were really mad. A lot of people were really mad. But I did a bit of research and it seems like this is resolved with all the parties, but when it happened, it was entertaining um, just to see the real side of some people when they got really upset. All right, the last drama, the last drama, my drama. 
We'll see if you know about this. It, this isn't really booktube drama, but it's something that happened to me. I posted a review of Birds of Prey, the movie, a few weeks ago. I am a graduate of film. I work professionally in the film industry. So I feel like I have a little bit of understanding of filmmaking and the process behind it, but apparently not. I made this video about how I thought that the film was marketed to the wrong age demographic. And anyway, I had two people in the comments at length tell me that I was wrong. They, they assumed that I was talking about how the film wasn't marketed to men or some bullshit, which I wasn't talking about. If you watch the video, it was pretty clear that that wasn't my aim. I was talking about the age demographic, not the gender demographic. Anyway, pretty much got taken out of context and people got mad at me. Then there was a subtweet on Twitter by one person, one lovely person who decided to subtweet me, which is really professional of you. Um, anyway, it was, it was weird and it was so unnecessary. Um, so I'm gonna put this as stupid tea because it was so stupid that these people thought they could just use this as an opportunity to talk about something I'm not even talking about. I wasn't even talking about gender demographics. I was talking about age demographics and how I thought the film was being marketed to a younger audience when it was an R-rated film and that's why it lost so much money at the box office. Also, I work in the film industry. I feel like I have a bit more understanding about this stuff than these people who I'm pretty sure don't work in the film industry. That's all I wanna say on it, it's done. Anyway, that's my video for today. Tier ranking booktube drama. That was fun. I kind of enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed it. But um, thank you for watching. Hopefully we'll be back to normal types of videos soon. I just had no ideas for this week's video. So this is what we came up with. Anyway, as always, let me know what you thought in the comments and your opinions on some of these booktube dramas, if you like. I don't want to talk too much about it because a lot of this is old news. Yeah, I will see you soon in another video. Bye.